Here's an exercise to help reinforce our harmonic knowledge, understand the fingerboard better, practice our technique crossing strings, and understand inversions of arpeggios. I call this exercise pitch pivots, and the idea is to take a single note and build a bunch of chords around it. What I'm doing here is choosing low notes on the bass, the E, F, F sharp, G, and G sharp, as starting points to create a whole bunch of different chords. Let's take a look now at pitch pivots as we get into today's lesson. Welcome to Learn Jazz Bass with Matt Rubicki. If you're interested in learning more about how to play jazz bass, as always, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, check below for a partial PDF related to this lesson. So as I say, this is called pitch pivots. And what I wanna do is sort of explain the overall idea and then go over some of it with you. The first thing is that we are choosing one of these notes, as I mentioned, one of these low notes to start. And basically where we're getting is that we want to arpeggiate chords, four part chords, across all four strings, playing one note per string and being able to play all four of the chords. Now, remember, we've got to identify what chords are available first. So if you want to begin this exercise with sort of a review, I would choose one of these notes, E, F, G flat or F sharp, G, A flat or G sharp. Choose one of those notes as your starting note and find all the possibilities of four part chords that this is the root of. So we've got major six, minor six, major seven, major seven sharp five, minor seven, minor seven flat five, minor major seven, diminished seven, dominant seven, dominant seven flat five, dominant seven sharp five, and dominant seven sus four. So great, let's say we have chosen uh, F as our starting note, and so we've got F six, F minor six, uh, F major seven, F uh, minor seven, right? Um, F7, uh, F7 flat five, F7 sharp five, right? Uh, what else did I mean? F diminished. Yeah? So you wanna think about all these possibilities. The reason we're thinking of them is that we're gonna take this chosen note over the course of these pitches and pivot a bunch of different four part chords around it. So not only is this F the root, but of course it is also the third of a note. It's also the sixth of a note and so on. So we wanna sort of figure out what can we build around this starting note of F here, for example. Of course, as we build it, as I mentioned, if we start with F, we can have F major seven, F diminished, uh, F dominant flat five and so on. But then also consider that F is a chord tone of other chords, like I said. So F is also the minor third of D minor seven, D minor seven flat five, D diminished, and so on, D minor major seven. It is also the major third of D flat. So D flat seven, D flat major seven, D flat major seven sharp five, and so on. It's also the fourth of C sus, it's the fifth of B flat as the root. It's the flat five of B as the root. It's the, the um, uh, sharp five of A as the root. It's the sixth of A flat. It's the flat seven of some kind of G. So that could be G seven, G minor seven, and so on. And it is the major seven of G flat major seven. And that can also be a minor major seven, so. or F sharp minor major seven is a little bit more appropriate. Okay, great. So we've said, okay, there's a bunch of possibilities to be built around this single pitch. And in fact, there's about 70 per pitch as far as what you can make following the rules of this sort of game that I'm laying out or this exercise. So once you've identified or thought about what notes are possible or sort of gotten that frame of mind, the next thing is to give ourselves some parameters to work with. And for me, what I found is interesting is to take these four part chords and only four part chords, no extensions, no triads or anything like that. We want to take exactly four notes that make up a chord and we want to distribute those notes over each string. 
Not only that, when we want to play one note per string, not only that, we don't want to make it so that we have to make a large leap unless we're coming from an open string. So no leap larger than a minor or major sixth um, from a fretted note to another fretted note, in other words. So it just becomes really unwieldy at that point. So when you do that, you start to come up with some interesting possibilities. Uh, as I may have said earlier in the video, if we're gonna do F major and we wanna distribute all these notes across, we would play F, C, E, A. Whoops, I played, put an A in there. F, C, E, A, E, C, F, like that. Only one note per string. If we want to do, for example, um, F dominant seven, we would just change the E flat. F, C, E flat, A, like that. We're all starting from this uh, beginning note. Now, if it's a chord tone of another chord, if that F is the third or whatnot, things are gonna change. For example, if it's the minor third, this is gonna be some kind of D minor as I talked about. So um, voicing it this way, voicing, in other words, laying out the notes in a particular order using one per string for a D minor seven has just a few options. That's gonna be F, A, D, C, like that, or F, D, closed here, A, C, or very easy, F, C, D, A. F, C, D, A, okay? If we wanna do D minor seven flat five, we're just flatting that five, A flat there. Uh, D minor major seven, we're gonna make this leap of a minor six to the C sharp. F, C sharp, D, A, like that. So that's the minor third, for example, there's a couple others. So when you start to look at this in its entirety, as I say, it becomes a lot. Not only that, we've just talked about one starting note. You can, as I've suggested, start from E, start from F sharp, start from G, start from G sharp, and so on. You could pretty much play all the chords in many tunes just from these four notes. One, two, three, four, five notes. <laughs> um, and to that end, I think the next step to do is to actually take it and apply it to some chord changes. So here's the standard out of nowhere, and we're just taking the first half of the form. Let's just walk through it, and then we'll play along with a recording and so you can hear what it sounds like. So our first uh, two bars are G major seven. And when we're applying this concept, this pitch pivot idea, to a song, we have to be able to choose from all five of these notes that we're talking about. We can't just stay on one to my, maybe there are some songs that you could for sure, but let's just say for argument's sake, you can choose any of the five. So I'm gonna move around from the, the lowest pitch that I'm using, but still staying within those five. So our first two measures are G major seven, and I can start from a couple places of these five. I can start from the F sharp, or I can start from the G. The notes of a major seven are, for a G major seven, G, B, D, and F sharp. I've gotta distribute those across the strings, so I've gotta go G, D closed, right? And then play F sharp, and then B. F sharp, D, G. G, D, F sharp. That's one option. Another option that we could do is to play the B next, and then the next thing that would have to happen would be F sharp, and we have to include the D, so make a leap there. So the next chord would be a B flat minor seven. And what notes of these five can we choose? The F, which is the fifth of B flat minor seven, or the A flat, that's flat seven of B flat minor seven. If I choose the A flat, I can say A flat, flat's flat seven, D flat is the flat third, F is the fifth of B flat, and the root. All right? If I choose F, it's a little bit of more reaching. We've gotta go F, and then we gotta to jump to D flat, and we gotta put the A flat here, and then make a shift to the B flat here. Like that. And the next chord is E flat seven. So of our available notes, G is the only one that is in that chord, one of those specific chord tones. So we're gonna play G, D, 
D-flat, E-flat, and then B-flat. The notes are E, G, B-flat, and D-flat. We're arranging them differently. We can also do something a little bit trickier and play the G, then make a leap to the E-flat here, B-flat here, D-flat here. Don't shy away from something that's hard. It will help you understand the fingerboard. The next uh, two measures are another G major seven for two bars, so we can play any derivation of the voicings that we've discovered. And then we go B minor seven to E seven. So in that B minor seven, the only thing that's available of these five notes would be F sharp. So we can play F sharp, B, D, A, quite easy. We can also play F sharp, A, D, B. And so on. So I've done this for the rest of this section of the tune and you can do it of course with whole tunes. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like, what I've written out, with a recording playing along with us so we can hear the harmony too. Two, three, four. So that was okay, but it doesn't sound terribly musical, does it? And I understand that that's not really sort of meant to at this point, but we can we can make it feel a little bit more musical if we just do simple things like trying to change the direction with a little bit of what we might call voice leading. So moving just a touch when we turn around go from ascending to descending, we don't want to make big leaps as we go back down. So we want to try to keep the upper note very close to the upper note as we go down as well. So let's take a listen to this same basic idea on Out of Nowhere, but now ascending and descending, and you'll notice it sounds a little bit more mm, smooth, for example. All right, let's check it out. Three, four. So hopefully we're starting to sort of get somewhere. So now um, let's take these little arpeggios that we've done and put a little bit of some rhythm to them, yeah? Put some eighth notes to them. Very simple little cells that we can use that help it to make a little, sound a little bit more like a melody, right? So we can simply just go one and two and, right? So if we take exactly what's written here, See what I'm saying? So let's take a listen to that with the play along and see what that sounds like. Three, four.
And of course you can apply a whole bunch of different kind of rhythmic cells that you'd like. Certainly do something more interesting than that. Uh, but ultimately what we're trying to do is take this knowledge that we're sort of reinforcing in our hands and in our ears and be able to apply it to some sort of improvisation. So using these basic things that we've gone over in this exercise, let's try and make some actual sort of melodies, but still sticking to this kind of chord tone thing. Let's check it out. Three, four. Nothing super complex there, but hopefully you get the idea that you can use the kind of thing that you're teaching your hand in a way to think differently about the harmony. So hopefully this has been helpful to kind of see how this can be used in a practical way. Of course, there's a lot more to do and a lot of that is up to you. And I hope that the PDF that I have with this video will help you sort of make sense of this exercise that I'm talking about. I'm still working on it and it's been very, very helpful so far. I still have a long way to go. But I do hope that you'll join me next time, and thanks for joining me today. As always, remember to like and subscribe, check for that PDF below, and remember, straight ahead and strive for tone.